Welcome to the podcast, Food Talks. I'm Dallas Townsend. I will be your host. And I act as the uninformed consumer asking a nutritionist all the questions that you have. Hello, I'm Jordan Townsend. I'm our resident nutritionist here at Naturally You, and I'm here to inform the uninformed consumer, answering and helping to unpack some of your more difficult nutrition questions. And welcome back. Today, we are going to be talking about whole food supplementation, uh, specifically standard process supplements versus generic slash other brands. Really talking about why standard process, the brand we use here at Naturally You, is better. And Jordan can fill us in on more of the details of, you know, why standard process oh, is gotcha. the way to go. Yeah, and then- Kind of like what I just said, though. It goes back to mostly just synthetic versus natural. Now, that's a weird topic. We actually listened to that recently on a podcast episode. Remember that? The guy got into what is natural? Yes. Yeah. And, like, what is being natural, like, as far as humans? You'd be surprised. Well, you can start to split hairs, right? You can get really deep. So with this one, we're going to keep it fairly simple as far as what we're talking about. And we're going to focus mostly on foods and more importantly the things inside foods because that's what this whole podcast really kind of starts as is a lot of us kind of forget why do we eat food you know we we think you know you need energy right if i, if I want to wake up and move around and exercise mainly because i'm hungry but yeah but why are you getting hungry that's what i'm saying it goes back to that natural thing the more you start to look deeper the more complicated the actual answer becomes and it's not for calories per se you need calories just like your car needs gas. But what we forget about a lot of times is all the other stuff that comes around, comes with food. You get fiber in an apple. You get vitamins in an apple. You get minerals. You get all of these other phytochemicals in an apple. That's what we're actually usually eating the apple for. There's some calories there, yeah, but there's not really enough calories based on how much nutrition is there. So there's usually two breakdowns in foods. There's high-calorie foods that are low in nutrition, and there's low-calorie foods that are high in nutrition. Easiest example of that, a vegetable, perfect example, is think something like broccoli versus a bag of chips. So there's 250 calories in that bag of Lay's. There's almost nothing else. So you flip the bag over, it's zero, 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 some sodium, some calories. That's pretty much all there is. The other side of that, and this is what kind of is the reason we have a problem with calories like we do, is broccoli is extremely low calories, but extremely high in what? The vitamins, the minerals, essential fatty acids, all this other stuff. So which one did we have access to early in our existence, Dallas? Broccoli or Lay's potato chips? Broccoli. So humans really early were eating a lot of food that didn't have a lot of energy in it. That's why we became such calorie seekers that's why sugar and salt and fat light our brains up because hey man 90 percent of what you're going to eat is not going to have any of these things in it so when you find them that's why you have that response so we got kind of confused we started thinking okay well if the the reward and the and the feel good pleasure side of food is when is in the high calories that must be what we need right no it's only because of it's rare what you're really eating food for, and I'm sure y'all have heard me say this before, is everything else that goes into making your machine work properly. I always remind people, your, your brain is made out of mostly fat. So if you're eating a low-fat diet, you're missing one of the key components to make healthy brain tissue. Your heart is B vitamins. Your muscles, B vitamins. So if you're not getting enough of all of the Bs, B1 through 12, you cannot make healthy heart tissue. You can't make the proper muscle tissue. The next one over is minerals. Now, we usually think about calcium. That's our big one for bones, right? Well, your bones are made of things besides just calcium. So that's the other side there. If you don't have magnesium, strontium, calcium in this, in this protein matrix, that's what your bones actually made out of. So you see, that's what I want people to remember is all of these very very specific things are what you're eating supposed to be eating food for so a lot of times when you're hungry you perfect example you go eat just a bowl of cereal well you might get even probably eat a second bowl I was of cereal about to say, after the first i'm always down for a second bowl of cereal well that's calories and sugar that's how the carbs work carbs make you hungry right so you eat that and eventually you stop eating because you feel what full well that's your stomach saying hey 
I physically can't put any more food in here. The problem is the reason you get hungry in one hour, where was the vitamin A? Where was the vitamin C? Where was the mineral? Where were all the other things? That's what I was telling you you were hungry for, Dallas, not calories. Heck, you're 28 pounds overweight. I didn't need <laughs> any more fuel. I need all these. I need things to. Co- I need collagen to cushion my joints. I need. I need uh, protein to rebuild some of these muscles. So that's what's so interesting about this, and that's when vitamins kind of come into play more than anything. We'll start with the reason to take vitamins first, because, like you just said, there's there's a lot of different types out there. There's the cheap ones that you find everywhere, then the one, the professional ones we sell here. But the reason you need to focus on taking vitamins, minerals, essential fatty acids today is you live in 2020. So our access, because that's what the whole knowledge is power thing, it's kind of working in our benefit. But the problem is we start to realize how little of these things we're actually getting in our diet, it's at least the average American. Now, there's always the exception to the rule, the person who's eating eight ounces of fresh salmon every month, every day with a side salad and they're doing a green shake and they're doing all this stuff that that's awesome that is not how americans eat most americans grab a mcgriddle on the way to work they go and pick up a subway sandwich for lunch and they get home and they eat spaghetti and garlic bread and they might have some tea they might have some beer they might have some wine they might have some coca-cola in between there but you see how by just taking the easy route which the sad part is what you're geared for you've now cut out 80 percent of the reason you're eating food so that's what's so crazy. Is people think they're doing what they're supposed to. I, I I felt hungry. I ate a pizza. Not hungry. Good job, human. I must have done good, right? <laughs> There's something in there. I, I need it. I feel better. Wrong. So that's what's so interesting is now that we understand nutrition. Because this is another thing people don't think about. You ever eaten the same meal over and over and over and over and over? Yes. You get so tired of it. Like, ugh, really? Spaghetti again. And spaghetti's good. That's why I use that as an example. Go back thousands of years. That's an innate biological process. Is Okay, we don't have the science to understand vitamins, right? So the body's like, how do I make sure this person eats enough of everything to make sure I do get some vitamin C from this fruit and some uh, vitamin D from this vegetable and some, some iron from this red meat? That's why it won't let you eat the same foods over and over. After a while, they start to lose their pleasure because the body says, I need you to shift. A perfect example I think Please. of is all the sailors that get scurvy. Well, that's even, that's, that's the, the lack of vitamin C, right? Well, that was the first example we realized of like, oh my gosh, if you don't get a certain vitamin, it, that one's a weird one. Because a lot of times I was listening to Dr. Rhonda talk about this. She was talking about magnesium specifically. How about like 80% of Americans are magnesium deficient? And someone said, well, what's the sign of that? She's like, there really is none. You wouldn't have a symptom. Like, you wouldn't have a rash. You wouldn't have a headache or anything like that. But she's like, the problem with magnesium is you now see cognitive decline 15 years sooner than someone who is properly getting enough magnesium. So that one's even scarier. Where are you supposed to get magnesium? So magnesium is a very interesting one. It's just a mineral. So it's in things like spinach. It's in things like it's pretty much in all the plants some meat proteins but pretty much all the plants because if you really the the interesting thing to to realize with this magnesium is one of the main minerals plants use to move their it's their version of blood basically interesting magnesium's in blood it's in chlorophyll (laughs) so that's why you get a lot of magnesium and stuff from there but look at our diets in america our diet our plates are i always tell my clients if you look at your plate and everything is white brown or yellow that's not a that's scary that that's your first mistake so that's the first issue with with why we're even magnesium deficient we're not eating any green leafy vegetables oh my burger had lettuce on it okay that i hate to break it to you that would be magnesium deficient lettuce too well there you go what is it grown in right because npk is how we grow most of our commercial agriculture all you need is nitrogen phosphorus and potassium that's great but where's the copper Where's the magnesium? Where's the calcium? Where's everything else? The seleniums, the trace trace minerals. Yeah. That's why we're having all these chronic health issues because we're not giving this machine. Because that's what I always tell people. If you think about the human body, it's honestly the craziest technology we have. Can you imagine if you crashed your car and the car just self-healed? 
Like you just left, nice. you just left it in the garage overnight. You realize your body does. Well, that. you left it in the garage, but you popped a couple of supplements in the gas yeah, tank. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. You put in some. Here, you just you just dropped a bar of steel in there, and it took that steel and it remat. Yeah. It replaced it. Your body does that, but we don't even think twice about it. We go, oh, of course it heals. Wait, what do you mean you auto regenerate that skin tissue? What are you talking about? That well, that's you just take casual? it for granted because everybody does it. Exactly. So that's what's so interesting though is if you don't put the things in you can't build the correct connective tissue you can't build the right density of bone so that's what this really all gets back to the machine can't work properly if you don't get all this stuff in so this is why supplementing is so important in 2020 especially us we're not a coastal city so our access to essential fatty acid foods is going to be half that honestly 75 percent less than that of someone who just lives on the ocean because they're going to have fresh fish always available to them yeah. so there's little things like that also how much fresh produce do you get oh well i go to kroger okay that's <laughs> old produce even at kroger even yeah. at, even at whole foods unless you're going to a farm down the road or a farmer's market that's a three to six week old uh squash or a piece of broccoli or whatever you're eating so these are the issues it's because too once you pick that broccoli it immediately starts losing its nutrition. That's why we talked about this. Frozen can actually be better sometimes, mm -hmm. especially on vegetables specifically, because if you flash freeze them, you basically freeze time. You don't allow it to keep breaking down. It depends on the type, though. I mean, I've had no. some flavor, frozen, right? I've had some, like, frozen peas and carrots, and they, like, physically look different than, like, canned peas or carrots. They look almost like plastic. Like, were they, like, really bright they almost? They were so bright, yeah. And, That's like, freshness. So the difference is what you're seeing in a can it's been cooked. So that's why canned foods are the worst. One, they add sodium. They add a bunch of other stuff to help keep it, mainly so it tastes good, sometimes to preserve it. But what they do is they cook it. So the thing is, too, the so, ultimate way to get rid of nutrition in your food is to cook it. That's why raw food is so important, too. And that's another thing we'll get to once we get back so to So the, the color is a good thing. So color is for, everything. Remember, okay. remember what you don't want to see, white, brown, yellow. So if you see, like, a dark sad gray brown pea or you see like a vibrant neon green pea there's a reason okay why do you think we see color dallas that's why i try to remind people it for the human animal that's super important if you're a dog and you only eat meat color doesn't matter more importantly you need to be able to hunt at night so yeah. if anything trade color for night vision it, it's little things like that. We are hunters and gatherers. So if you're walking through a green forest, you better notice that red apple or else you don't eat. You better notice that blueberry patch. What, what is that? What is that thing on that bush? So it, it, you see how far we've gotten from mm -hmm. what we're actually supposed to be doing every day. And this thing is, it's not... I don't want to go back to hunting and gathering. That's what I always I need to emphasize that. That's what I was about to say. I mean, what we're supposed to do, be doing is a little subjective, right? But again, but just, life's complicated. Just go a few so. people back, and that's what they were having to do. Is what I mean, really. I mean, even even in society, people weren't making it that that easily either. You know what I mean? Like, go back to ancient Rome. People crapping in the streets <laughs> they had that huge go, cholera go outbreak go to mainland china they're still doing that and that's what i'm saying disease like just a fever what happened oh i don't know some fever is just sweeping through the slums of rome right now so yeah but we're we, still sending our we kids have no, to school we have no worry. idea right yeah, well, well, we're going to sacrifice a couple more slaves to these gods, and we hopefully that'll stop it. And then it stops eventually, and they think it hey, worked. Yeah, no, hey, yeah. So yeah, we now have the solution for for pandemic. You just take everyone, give us one slave, we burn them in a fire. So and that's wait. what I'm saying. Like we're not that far away from that. Yeah. That's what you need to remember more than anything. So let's get back. Since you don't have access to these things, that's when the vitamins and the supplements come in. So let's start with the synthetic first because we'll get into why standard process is what we use. And again, we, we also use systemic. We also use energetics. We use a lot of whole food ones here. And that's because even standard process only has so many they can make. So what you're really looking at first and foremost is the problem is they, the FDA even, Scientists, they will say that vitamin A is vitamin A is vitamin A. It doesn't matter where it comes from, how it's made, it is vitamin A. That's wrong. So I'll tell you why that's wrong and why the understanding that they're giving isn't correct. First and foremost, source is important. 
how do you create something, right? Think about that. How do you build vitamin C? Because first off, vitamin C is extremely complicated. Because we can start with that one because it's fairly basic. Everyone knows about ascorbic acid. That's by the way. When you look, when you get emergency, or you get these little packs in the in the grocery store, if you flip it over, it always says ascorbic acid. Ascorbic acid is the base molecule of vitamin C. Where where do you even pull a base molecule from to make a vitamin? So there you go. If you really look at it, I'd love to show you this real quick just so you can actually see what ascorbic acid looks like and you'll see why they're all made from what they're made from. Generally hydrocarbons, H, C, and O. That's what 99% of the planet is made out of carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. Now sometimes they stick and sulfurs it, on there. And it's while you're looking that up, it's just the way you arrange them that makes them. Remember when we looked at the fats? They were all the same okay. thing. There's C and H. Well, some of them I mean, are double bonded. I have a very, very base level of chemistry, which I'm sure most of the listeners probably do too. Right. Because right, right, right. it's not something you dive into extensively unless you're going into that field. So half the population, or probably more, knows very, very little about yeah. even basic chemistry. So there's ascorbic acid. So what did I say? There's not even any C's in there. It kind of looks like a dog. Actually, there are C's. I forgot. It's it's assumed to be a C if there's when it. I took organic chem as well. When there's not listed where they meet, there's a carbon right there. Oh, okay. But no, that's what's so crazy about chemistry, Dallas. Is once you want you realize that it's think about it, it's kind of like DNA, right? There's only three uh, puzzle pieces, but how many ways can you put three puzzle pieces together? <laughs> About a billion. The same thing. There's the three chords in music, right? You learn three chords, you can play a thousand you different songs. You can play songs. a lot of songs with three chords. That's nature. That's that's kind of where we got that because idea. Because it's the rhythm, for those who don't understand. So, <laughs> since me and you are looking at this, and we don't have a video podcast yet, I just want to kind of explain it to you, what you're looking at. So, ascorbic acid is actually not vitamin C. And what I mean by that is vitamin vitamins in the body act as, as gears, essentially. Meaning, if you have one gear... How useful is that gear? It's just no. basically got a metal frisbee, right? Yeah. If, once you get two gears together and you turn one, that energy is translated to the other one. Now you can then you can get seven, eight, nine, ten. You get extremely complicated machines. That's kind of how vitamins work. So ascorbic acid is actually the antioxidant layer or cover for vitamin C. So there's actually a whole other when you look at it's actually called vitamin C complex. And that's why, our, that's why our vitamins are called cataplexes, by the way. They're the full vitamin B complex and the other constituents and the precursors and the postcursors and the what we call the vitamin C specifically has factor J and factor K. Hmm. So if you just take ascorbic acid, remember, you have backups of some of these things in your body. You have some of these little things to help it go. But you know what's got more of that? Oranges. Oranges has all nine pieces to make vitamin C active in the body. So that's where this gets really weird. Hmm. You, you can take 10,000 milligrams of vitamin C. Well, your body might can only absorb 2,000 of that. So that's bioavailability. We'll get into that in a second, too. The other problem is it might only be able to use 500 milligrams. Why? Because it only has that much factor J in its emergency reserves. It only has that much of these other constituents on hand. Yeah. And you're... So you show up with a bunch of A gears and you only have one B gear. Exactly. So you can only do one of those A gears. So well, yeah, gear. your body's thinking, hey, dummy, uh, I can't do anything with the rest of this because I don't have the thing about it. Like, it's like if you didn't have... It's like if you're working a pizzeria and you only had one thing of oven mitts. Okay, hey, we can only take one uh, one pizza out of the oven at a time now. Yeah. That's what we're doing to ourselves. And that's why that's the convoluted thinking of humans is, oh, well, if vitamin C is good, just take a bunch of vitamin C. It'll just be, you just flush me out. No. <laughs> and that's why doctors, when they say that a lot of times, like, hey, you just pee out. Uh, don't take vitamins. Don't take supplements. You just pee out. You just pee it all out. You do. If you don't need to use it, thank God your kidneys have that ability. You don't want to just keep toxic levels of vitamin C stored in your body, or more importantly, ascorbic acid. So let me real quick pull that up. So how would you make the bioavailability better if you did take a lot of vitamin C? So the bioavailability is part of it, too. That that comes to from more, like it was going to go back to how you build it. So remember, 
because of our advanced understandings of chemistry, if we have this picture, we can arrange the molecules. We have different techniques where we can make things double bond to each other. That's why we have hydrogenated oils, by the way. We, we can, we can supersaturate things under high pressure and high temperature and make them chemically alter themselves. So we can build vitamin C. We know how to do it. The thing is, plants can too. Guess what, though? They don't build it like this, Dallas. So that's where this gets very interesting. Ascorbic acid by itself is just part of the vitamin C complex. So when you get it from something like an orange, not only are you getting all the other pieces, you're getting a more easily absorbable, more importantly, a form your body recognizes. Why can't we make it that way then? We're not oranges. We don't understand nature to that degree. We're not that advanced in machines. Now think about it. But though. I thought we could arrange it any way we wanted. Well, we can, but there's other steps involved with the way a, a plant actually produces things. Okay. Perfect example, iron. There's two types of iron that even exist in nature. There's heme iron and there's non-heme iron. So heme iron comes from red meat and animals. That's the type you get in a steak. There's non-heme iron that comes from things like spinach. Guess what the better form is? the one from the red meat so there's another example too where even plants don't do it as well as as animals now it's not that they don't do it as well how important is red red blood cells to us versus to plants not very important especially like a cow too that's why they have that heme form of iron because they can't move oxygen around the body without it well plants use chlorophyll and they use magnesium instead of iron so there's iron in plants but it's not going to be prioritized. More importantly, the plant's not going to make start doing all these extra unnecessary steps to get iron into a form that the people who eat them can use it most efficiently. So these synthetic chemicals are just that are made by man or made in the lab or whatever are just arranged like Frankensteinly compared to how they are natural because they don't have a lot of these precursors. And exactly. So no, think about it though. All they're doing is taking hydrocarbons. So typically our most potent source of hydrocarbons is crude oil or coal tar, any sort of byproduct from the petroleum industry. So that's what they'll take to build into these molecules. So that's the other side of it. Now, weirdly enough, Dallas, you know what a plant uses to do that? Soil. That's hmm. a hydrocarbon. We don't really think about it like that, but it is. Now, the other thing is they also use sunlight and they also use water. So they have a different approach to build that molecule. Yeah, they have a very complex system. And what so. was your source? Well, theirs was earth, sun's light, and water. This one was coal tar and other chemicals. They have to add different things to break down the hydrogen bonds. They have to add uh, what they would call um solvents but on a molecular level are these molecules not all the same at some point so there you go that's the th the difference is the way that they package them so this one is a stripped down like you said earlier frankenstein version the so, ascorbic acidic acid that human so made. perfect example would be if there was a robot standing by me now we look the same Dallas. we both have two arms we both have two legs a torso a head do we are we the same no. That's, what, that's how you need to understand these. Okay. How are we packaged? Remember, biology, more importantly, organic matter, organic things, animals and plants, me, myself, it's packaged different. So because my packaging is different, just like he has metal skin, I have soft, squishy skin. So because of that, they act and they actually act differently in your body. More importantly, they've actually done studies on this. I was going to read you this one real quick that actually synthetic vitamins specifically are not absorbed the same way. Now that goes, that shifts more into bioavailability. Bioavailability is the ability of the body to actually use what you eat. Because that's the other problem too. A lot of times when you read the, the nutrition label, it says it has 100% of your daily value of vitamin A. What it doesn't tell you is how much of that vitamin A is actually absorbable. Because they don't tell you that certain vitamins compete with each other. Certain minerals compete with each other. Then why, why do they give you so much if you can only absorb just... Uh, it's called marketing. Okay. Yeah, more is better, right, Dallas? You live in America. I mean, I guess, but <laughs> well, if, if I, can, I only needed 200 milligrams, why am I taking 1,000? Well, yeah, well, you're a shopper, and you don't know anything. <laughs> and you look at the package. It's like Jerry. So well, this one's quick acting. But this one's long lasting. <laughs> <laughs> Right? That's all it is. Well, you look, you go, okay, well, this one's ten. This one's 10,000. 
This one's a thousand. This one's twenty cents more. Okay, I mean, it's not gonna matter. Just pick that one. Yeah. So that's the other problem too. Now, the the big thing with bioavailability is how is it packaged? So remember, because plants are organic matter, because these things are organic matter. Once they get into the body, the body's used to them showing up in this packaging. Versus when they come in the chemical synthetic, sometimes the packaging can't even be open. That's the biggest issue with a lot of these synthetic vitamins is your body can't even absorb them properly because they don't have some of those other constituents to help even in the absorption. So you get a lot of that just sits in your gut and goes straight out. So why would the FDA and other scientists not take this view into account? about the way they're packaged, they're missing precursors, you know, plants do it this way, we do it this way. Why would they assume that a mineral, a vitamin is a vitamin? The reason is, is it's basically a reductionist view of it. It was kind of the same opinion as fat is bad. But why would the FDA hold that view? What, well, is, what incentive is there to sell more easily well, it's almost packaged that, vitamins? It's almost there's no incentive. Remember, it, remember, suppl- it, remember yeah. supplements and stuff are not, may, are not uh, regulated. regulated by the right. FDA at all. Yeah. So that's more of just, hey, in our understanding, vitamin A is vitamin A. So if you want to make vitamin A and sell it, you can sell vitamin A. And that's the thing. They don't want to get into the who's, nuances. Whose jurisdiction would that be? The it's Department actually, of Health? It's actually no one's. The supplement industry is actually very strange. And that's why we have a lot of, like, for the lack of a better term, wild cards out there. There are a lot of disingenuous brands that will just put a bunch of crap in a bottle call it something and sell it well you that's when they do they've done a lot of these tests well a lot of them come back with lead a lot of them come up with toxic stuff so turmeric's a good example where are you where are you getting your turmeric from oh well you know i go online i don't even know where you get turmeric. i go Is online it, and I'll, most of it comes from india or southeast like asia is it a plant or f- Tur- turmeric is that yeah okay, i don't know if i've ever it's, actually if i'm seen not it. mistaken i think it's a root vegetable actually it's like oh, this okay. big root and you cut you dry it cut it up grind it into a powder Hmm. Most of it comes from India. It's what yellow curry. That's why it's yellow. It comes from turmeric. Uh, Southeast Asia. But a lot of these countries don't have very high standards for production. So they'll use pesticides. They'll use bad uh, chemical sprays, uh, fertilizers. So those types of things will leach some of these things into it's your just, turmeric. It's so, just always amazed me that people can just write that off. Like they don't really even care about well, they just, where, what pesticides people price. use. And so that's why it goes back to, well, how much did that turmeric, well, this bottle's $3 for 200 of them, and this one's $30 for 200 Some people are like, oh, well, we washed it. Like, okay, yeah, stick, wipe, you ran- wipe your ha- your butt with your hand well, and then like wash chlorine, it without soap. Well, just rinse it just... with water and see how well that goes for you. Well, chlorine's just the perfect deep like cleanser right no like water doesn't work like that and a lot of them more importantly a lot of fat soluble things are water resistant you yeah. put water on it just roll right off that's a lot of your pesticides they're made to stick to the plant in the rain so we digress but so let's back up though but yes the biggest problem is they they don't believe that they're any different they just think that magnesium is not magnesium. that they're malicious like you said it's just not in their wheelhouse to even make that distinction and, and try to get into it right yeah. so now the other thing too are minerals because calcium is not all calcium is not calcium in the sense that your body can use it because there's calcium carbonate which is what seashells chalk is made out of then there's things like calcium lactate that's the one we sell mm-hmm. here too the difference is one you can actually use and absorb easily the other one is essentially rocks for lack of a better term so again how much rock is in your diet now not enough. Yeah, you eating any chalk lately? Mm-mm. So that's the problem is when you get stuff like Caltrate, these big, huge bottles that you just get over the counter at Walmart. Well, that's just a thousand milligrams of rock salt, basically, or basically just chalk. So you can eat it and take it. Your body says, what, what, what are you eating salt for? Or more importantly, what are you eating rocks for, <laughs> dummy? Now, more importantly... This can cause inflammations and cause other issues because now you got rock sitting in your stomach. Is that we've talked about this with iron supplementation? So some of the iron, prescription iron pills are literally iron filings. What? what? How much metal do you eat? None. None. You're good because you shouldn't be eating metal. It's going to cause inflammation. More importantly, constipation is a huge side effect of iron supplements because that iron gets in there and just sits in your gut. Maybe we do need some regulation around this. We really do. I don't know what that looks like. I don't know how hard the FDA cracks down. 
does it make also the biggest problem the reason they don't want it supplement prices are going to go through the roof Dallas so they're going to be the same way as medications which is oh well only this company has approval to make this product oh well that's basically a patent because all I just told you I'll only I can make turmeric <laughs> okay well it's a thousand dollars a bottle if you want turmeric otherwise you can't have it be nice if there were some standards i guess for sure but you see what i'm saying that's all it's going to do it is going to squeeze out some of the bad ones but all of a sudden the prices are going to get crazy yeah so that's the biggest issue when you it's all about how it's produced now when you get calcium that's been through spinach that means the spinach absorbed the stone mineral rock out of the ground converted it that 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 spinach had to convert it uh the iron the magnesium whatever into a form it could use conveniently for me and you because it's a living organic thing it's very similar to the way we use it same thing goes with uh iron if you just eat iron filings or you eat a red meat steak this one's so much more absorbable because that cow has already done most of the work for you it's already pre-packaged it in a way that its muscles can use iron how convenient that's what we're going to use iron for Mm -hmm. so that's the big difference between the synthetic side and the natural side they've already been taken by an organic living thing and converted into something that living thing can use so that's the biggest difference yeah so again it goes back to when you're looking at synthetic vitamins you're looking at the robot version they they are technically similar and and the same they will not act the same just like again a robot me and me they're going to be different. He's just running code. I can think for myself and do what I want. So that's where it gets kind of even trickier is not all are created equal. So let's shift away from the synthetic into the ones I want you taking. And that's what we use here at Standard Process. The reason I got into Standard Process to begin with when I first found out about them is I went to their website and they have this thing that's just called The Farm. The Farm is a little... It's the largest organic farm currently operating in the United States. It used to be like 300 acres, but they've last time I actually went, which was about a year and a half ago, two years ago, they recently expanded. They're now at a total of 420 acres across. They're in Wisconsin, and I think they have a separate field also in Wisconsin. Like they bought some extra property a little further away. So what they do, Dallas, is they make a vitamin C complex. They make a vitamin C supplement. It's called Cataplex C. And that's what I was just talking about with you earlier. Cataplex is implying all of the constituents. So what do they do? What is the difference between their ascorbic acid? Because again, another weird thing, you can even Google this. There's one plant, I believe it's in like Pennsylvania, New Jersey, it's somewhere up there in the Northeast. They make 98% of all the vitamin C that goes into all supplements in the country. One plant. So that's what I was saying. A lot of this is just synthetic. They're just like one get, tree or one version? One plant. One one factory makes oh, all the vitamin okay. C. No, one factory. One okay. one chemical process. And then they, they're, they're wholesalers. They make ascorbic acid in mass, and they sell it to emergency and uh, sinus, whatever. Just Right? Yeah. So that's what's weird. So what standard process does is they grow foods that contain high amounts of catap- or vitamin C. They then harvest that plant. They have a very, very specific processing thing. So what they'll do is a perfect example for, for their – let me just read their cataplex C. Hold on a second. So these are the ingredients that are in our version of cataplex C. The first ingredient is actually veal bone. So the bones nutrition specifically. The next one is bovine adrenal, then it's nutritional yeast, organic buckwheat, so that's the food that they're growing specifically that's pretty high, Uh, alfalfa, they've got more bovine bone, they've got reishi mushroom, shiitake mushroom, defatted wheat germ, uh, more veal bone, organic carrot, which we've always heard like orange and stuff is good, right, yeah. Echinacea, rice brand, and vitamin E. So that's the thing, is they take all of these different things that are high in vitamin C and its constituents, and then they put that together into this tablet. So when you take it, you've your body goes, hey, I don't have to pull any reserves of anything. Secondly, I know what every single one of these things is. I know what, I recognize veal bone as a tissue and as a food. I know what buckwheat is. I don't know what 
this Frank and Coltar stuff is. So that's what yeah. we forget more than anything. Just so, pulling it from natural sources. Exactly. Now the other thing is how they process it. They don't ever. They don't do anything at high heat. Because if you ever heat or cook something, you denature. It's when you, the proteins start to break down and change. So what they do is they do like a, a low temp drying. So about 90 degrees, they dry all that buckwheat, chop it up, compress them all into a little tablet. So there, now you go. That's what's nice about standard process to me is you can now live your life as an American in 2020. Eat pretty normally. Take these things to fill in your gaps because regardless of how bad you eat, if you're on cataplex C, you're getting all of those foods in your diet every day. If you're, vi- if you're vitamin C deficient or if you have a problem. Or liveplex, right? That's yeah. one of our big supplements. Well, that's got bovine liver in it. How much bovine liver do you eat? I don't know. I've never eaten any. <laughs> I've never eaten beef liver. So that's what's kind of interesting about this is I love, I love the supplements because you don't have to be perfect. You can now get all of these very, very niche very, very specific foods that your body is missing. More importantly, you're not going to have – how much reishi mushroom do you have access to? That that, Buckwheat, right? Or um, have you ever had alfalfa? That's what I'm saying. That's just grass, Dallas. That's why this is so interesting to me, and that's why I would respect standard process because that's how they've done it from day one. They came out in 1929 with the first multivitamin. It was Catalan. All he did was grind up beets, carrots, rutabagas, alfalfa, buckwheat. He took all of the these superfoods of the time, condensed them down, put them in a tablet. There you go. There's there's your multivitamin. Only because I know it has all the things in it that humans need. So that's what's kind of cool to me about the whole food side of it. Not only are they coming in a form your body understands, they have everything under the sun in them that makes that thing work. So you're not just getting a single gear when you take Cataplex C. You're getting the whole gear mechanism. You're getting the start. You're getting the action. You're getting the finish. You're getting the recycle. That's the other thing they don't tell you, too. You don't really need that much vitamin C. Why? The body can recycle most of this stuff. Same with your minerals. Unless you sweat it out, your body can recycle selenium. I didn't know that. Glutathione, copper. That's why they're called trace minerals. You don't need a lot of copper. That's because the body can just keep recycling it. But through stressful events like sweating, urination, you can lose some of these things. So you, the thing is, because think about humans, right? We've survived for thousands and thousands of years, right? Were we all getting enough copper constantly? Probably not. So that's the thing is the body is able to kind of balance itself out. But depending on if you get into any of these troubled times or these things happen, where are you going to get more from? That's where that that's where these types of things come in. So now you can get good essential fatty acids from omega fish oil. Literally catch a tuna, squeeze the fat out of it. <laughs> Just squeeze it. That's what I'm saying. So you don't have to eat tuna every day. Or the the minerals, right? You can go take organically bound minerals, which is just literally they take seaweed from the ocean, dry it out, cut it up. There's organically bound minerals. So again, how much kelp do you eat? That that's what we're not thinking about. We eat because our stomachs are empty, not because of what we, nutrition we may be getting. A big thing you see in the South is, well, you know, I eat Cheetos every day. I eat Pop Tarts. My dad ate Pop Tarts his whole life. He's fine. He lived to seventy. I mean, what is that really living when you, you can't imagine someone was in perfect health until he was seven? My favorite term is there's a thing called health. There's a thing called lifespan, right? But there's another word called health span. Have you ever heard of that? Mm-mm. So that's what Dr. Rhonda and them talk about. You can live to be 90, Dallas, but if you had dementia at 72, what were those last 18 yeah. years? I mean, especially with today's technology, bro. We'd probably keep you alive for oh no, ever with if you had enough money. But With my friend who's worked in the ER, that's one of the things he said. He's like, yeah, man, you don't know how many DNRs I have, which is do not resuscitate. <laughs> he said, because these people literally he's like, yeah, I mean – I could keep your grandma alive. I could trach her. I can cut her esophagus open and shove a a breathing tube down there for her. And I can also keep her alive. I can break eight of her ribs doing CPR. Is that really? You want to stay alive at that point where you come to and you got bruised chest, you got six broken ribs, you got a hole in your throat, and you can't blink. And you're 80. Yeah, you so can't it's blame. not like you're just going to be up and running next week. Yeah. no. So that's the other problem is no one talks about health span. Health span is so much more important than lifespan because if your knees go out on you and you've got chronic back pain and you, if, you, if your heartbeat gets over 100 beats a minute, you're going to stroke out. 
what kind of existence are you living? You can't even go enjoy yourself. I think it would be better if our whole country focused on health span. Oh my god! Over lifespan. Get in line if it be if how many things would be better if our whole country <laughs> would shift focus, right? But no, exactly. That's why I just want to introduce that word because that's what they talk about. They talk about how things like sauna, exercise, diet, proper sleep. They they don't make you live longer. They make you stay healthy longer. So when you're seventy and I'm seventy, we're not going to look the same. We've already seen some of the people we've gone, we've grown up with. I, their health span is not very much longer for this world. They're going to be alive for about another 20, 30, 40 years. They're not going to feel good for any of it, Dallas, are they? No. I mean, what are you supposed to do for those last 30 years if you're wheelchair bound or collect a disability check? Watch TV and, and vote, get real political. Watch like Mari. <laughs> get really angry, right? Like that's the thing, that's what they always say. You either sour or you sweeten with time and age. People either you either are happy and you're healthy you're living a vibrant life you're excited or things just didn't go your way and you're just getting sad. Well, i guess people don't focus that you know living healthy if you're healthy that equals freedom i mean if you get just alive and you're not healthy you're not free to go do a lot of things i mean you're losing your freedoms by losing your health we're very here and now creatures you know what have you done for me lately because water right well why don't i drink water water sucks Water might not be as high of a dopamine hit as Coca-Cola, but you're not 70% Coca-Cola for a reason. You're 70% water for a reason. So as you – you know what it requires, Dallas? Nuance. It requires a curiosity. It requires caring, right? And that's the thing is a lot of us are so busy and overwhelmed and have so much on our plate already that – we can't even be asked to care about anything else. When I worked in a restaurant, there was a girl who uh, was a cashier, and the only thing she drank was Dr. Pepper. Like, exclusively. And she's been drinking it exclusively since I think she was 15, and she was like 22. This hurts me. And I tried to bring her some water, and it became a joke. Like, hey, I drink this. <laughs> Spit it out. She's like, I just don't like the taste of water. Just listen to what you're saying. No right one now. does that. There's nothing. No, to, what do you mean there's you don't no like the pleasure taste? there. Well, you're not drinking for pleasure, bro. You're drinking to stay alive. You're thirsty, so drink. You don't need to be drinking only Dr. Pepper. But do you see how we've been sold that that's normal? So you see, a lot of I, I don't want to be this guy because it is at the end of the day you are responsible for you. But we have been conditioned and told that oh, well, you, if you're hot, go inside, turn on the air conditioner. If you're hungry, you just say, hey, swing by McDonald's. You know, we have a cheap menu. We got good food. Hey, if, you're, if you want a Coke, you deserve one. Well, if it's your eighth Coke today, maybe you shouldn't go for another Coke. Yeah, so go I would for just, some water. There's an alternate timeline in this country where, like, drugs stay. Remember when you could just put heroin and <laughs> cough syrup back yeah. in the day? You could just put cocaine. Ask Coke. Hey, we have, a, we have a no sleep tonic. It's just liquid cocaine. Oh, yeah, I can't imagine why it, you. It works. I would love to see the ads if big corporations could just sell that over the counter. Like that's the thing is we would be normalizing heroin use because I'm sure there's a ton of money in an extremely addictive. We're addictive. just lucky it didn't get too far. We already have coffee. Would... The number one is coffee. Nobody acts like coffee is not extremely addictive, but you just sling coffee left and right. We have Starbucks. It's become trendy. Oh. What, what is that? A macchiato? Is well, that... coffee helps you work more, and that helps the economy, so and that the... helps us grow and defeat Russia and the socialists and the communists, and that's the real reason behind well, the problem. You know what also was a big eye-opener to me? I've been watching some of these old TV shows, or not old TV shows, but just like TV shows set in different times, like the 60s. You know what the war on terror is? It's the same thing as the Red Scare. Remember, you've watched that 70s show. All Red talked about were the commies. Yeah. All people talk about now are the terrorists. You see how how gently they shifted us in the, a 30, 40 year period? The real, and this is off topic. We're so off topic. Li- I love listening. It. <laughs> <laughs> the real problem is is productivity. You need a certain level. You so, don't need overbearing, kill yourself capitalism, which a lot of the younger generation, they don't like capitalism because they see that you're selling your life away to this corporation that doesn't care about you. In some film, in some form, I'm sure they don't, but like, you need to be productive as a society. Communism is like the exact opposite. They want you, well, we'll just all relax and we'll work and we'll all help each other out. So most people end up not working. And that, it devalues productivity. Well, yeah, the problem is, too, you got to put someone in charge. 
Yeah. That's where it all goes off the rails immediately. Well, who do we give all of the power to? <laughs> what is? Guess what? Everyone raises their hand. Everybody wanted to be that guy. So I guess we can wrap this back to uh, health. In a communist society, what does the, the food look like? What does the health side look like? Well, you like? get bread lines, right? I mean, you, you've heard of that. Not good for people's health. No. <laughs> well, it get, mostly because, again, without the demand of people saying, this is what I want to buy, this is what I want to do, and companies having to respond to that. If it's, okay, we don't have any corporations. The government has seized the means of production. They own the farms and the factories. Why do they have to make better? Yeah, we're just going to make okay, well, good enough. Well, you made, like, you'll stay well, alive. Well, you picked a, 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 an, an agriculture – you picked an agriculture czar. You put him in charge. He's making his cut. He's living cushy. Sir, we're having reports that the bread's moldy. First off, this guy's fired. Get him out of my office. Replace him with somebody new. Uh, if it's moldy, we need to just figure out a way to like paint over that so that they can't see the mold. We're not gonna, We're not going to fix it. Whereas there isn't a benefit to capitalism there, right? Because if bunny, all bunny bread is moldy, people are not going to keep buying that one. Anyone who supports communism wants to believe the guy in charge is going to do the right thing. They're going to try to not get us moldy bread. Anyone who believes in communism hasn't doesn't understand how people work, is yeah. what you just said. Exactly. They don't understand how human. We are designed to, the less we can do, the better. We are the the easier route you can take, the less humans and rivers. I say this all the time. They take the path of least resistance. That is physically nature. If I can burn less calories than my my competitor, guess who wins? <laughs> he died. He didn't make it. So that's what's so strange about this is we we act like that's not us. Oh well, we we understand now. You know, we're more nuanced now. But again, you're going to put one person in charge of food. So think about how nuanced food is. You're going to put one person in charge of health care. Think how nuanced health care is. You're going to say, okay, well, no more chiropractors, no more nutritionists, no more anything. We're going to have, we're going to have MDs and surgeons. That's it. Okay, well, you're cutting out a lot of care that could help people. So that's, that's what people yeah. miss to me about communism. And again, capitalism run amok can be just as bad. That's the thing. Is everyone thinks we beat the, the communist people. Capitalism just hasn't failed yet. We we we've, we've managed to squeeze, but we're on quantitative easing seven now, right? So don't talk to me about how capitalism is flawless either. Capitalism's great. It's one of the only things that works, but we definitely need some form of like. Capitalism needs that thing that's capital. in the Bible where every seven seventy years it resets. Yeah, that would nice. be perfect. Cause the problem with capitalism now is. Was that it, in the Bible? Yeah, they did. <laughs> every, Resetting capitalism. Well, no, every seven after I think it was every seven years, debt was just wiped out. Hmm. If you haven't paid this back, so we're just we're all gonna start from scratch. You know what it was? They couldn't keep records, Dallas. There's no yeah. digital trans there's easier, no dig- easier that way. There's no digital ledger, so they go, wait, wait, wait. I, well, I've already taken on two hundred new loans. That guy from six years ago, I don't remember. And plus you know what? That guy was close to paying his debt off anyway. Yeah. So no, that's my thing. The biggest issue to me with capitalism now is people starting too far ahead. Because there's things called old money in this country that Donald Trump is a perfect example. Took a small loan of a million. A small loan. Well, you can screw that up, but it's going, you're going to be very hard-pressed to screw up with a million dollars starting out. Yeah. That's not from a bank, Dallas. It's from daddy. You know what I mean? Worst case scenario. Well, the bank will, will seize away. your property and your assets. Daddy will just give you another loan. Or he won't, but, I mean, either worst case scenario. You go back to living a millionaire son's life, right? Yeah. So, no, that's all I'm saying is the problem with capitalism now is – Apple doesn't even need to innovate. Apple can just buy you. Okay, great. So now, Which for anyone still listening, look at Apple. The, I mean, they're a two trillion dollar company and they're doing great. But look how they are, they sell their products now. Everything's an accessory, and everything is everything designed to to des- end. Yeah, what planned obsolescence or what? A, what's it called? No, did you say you, had, you yeah. just nailed it? Yeah. I mean, we have all Apple products here, and out of like the seven computers, two of them are probably good. Like, because they're brand new and they're fast. All the other ones you almost can't even work on. They're only five years old. That's what's great. In Dallas, there's not like we've put some huge programs on here. They're bare bones and they still won't run. We use the web and we use pages. That's it. 
some numbers now. But no, exactly. It's not like we're running Photoshop and we've got huge cash files. But we and, accept that. Because what choice do we have? But we've also been put into this capitalist mo- mindset, which is just buy another one. Don't fix the thing that broke. Just buy another one. You see, that's the other thing. Before the Industrial Revolution, if something broke, if you ripped your pants <laughs> and you're an orphan in England... <laughs> You just got to fix your pants. You don't go get new pants. Or if your shoes break, you take them to the cobbler. Hey, fix my pair of shoes. <laughs> don't build me from scratch a new pair of shoes. My God, that's going to cost way too much. But that's not our economy. Our economy not is anymore. build and replace. Well, now it is. Build it, throw it away, hand me down, replace it. Well, with machines, right? With the way we can produce things nowadays. And this even goes back to the vitamins. I'm not saying that's a bad thing per se, but it probably does take a pretty a, big toll on <laughs> the world. Yeah, right. When no, you're cycling through natural look, resources. That's the thing. Think about landfills, right? They're only getting bigger. So at what point do the landfills not have enough room anymore to even accept new what trash? If, what if we <laughs> dug a hole to the center of the earth and just threw it in there? Would that work? <laughs> I don't know where the magma starts, and I don't know what digging that deep looks like. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know if we can get past the first layer. Oh, and then, no. like, the oh, crust, yeah. the mantle. Well, we've been, I think, the... I think we've been about 15,000 feet down digging, and then it's still, like, several miles to go before you're into any of that stuff. Inevitably, talking <laughs> about food in general leads us to capitalism a lot because, A, that's the society we live under. We have a lot cor- of the rules around the food we eat are made based on that capitalistic yeah, well, food corporations, society. right? We have companies that only feed us. And I like capitalism. I'm definitely not a communist in any way. And honestly, anyone who is a communist, they're just... They're I'm, idealists. They're idealists. They, they want to think that yeah. if we could do it this way and everybody could not have everybody, it'd be evil. perfect. They're just no. good-hearted. They think money grows on trees. It's actually printed at the Federal Reserve, but... Well, look at all the... If you want, just go read about communist revolutions. They were never nice. They were never gentle and peaceful and happy. They were very violent. And then more importantly, they were doubly violent once they got into power to make sure that power stuck. Well, if you're still listening, we appreciate it. Got a little touch of uh, capitalism and communism there at the end, but uh, it is food-related. Well, can I, hit, can I wrap it up for us, too, though? Yeah. It, it comes back full circle to that's why people choose synthetic vitamins. They're cheaper. They're yeah. more accessible. They're right there. And they have in their mind, hey, I was watching Dr. Oz the other day, and he was talking about probiotics. So when they're walking through the grocery store and they see this big probiotics thing, they just and, grab one. and it's $7 for 180 of them, let me, I, I feel good about that now. I can, I can now, in my mind, feel like I'm doing something good for myself. I'm doing something good for myself. So that's the big difference. Capitalism in that sense, that same thing, has caused the problem of this now, hey, well, people want to feel good about themselves. So let's just get, let's flood the market with vitamin C. How cheap can we make it? Great. You can make it cheap, but it's not, it doesn't work with the program. It's not exactly what you need. It doesn't fit the, you're trying to run Linux on, a, on, a, on an Apple. <laughs> it is not going to work. Mm-mm. All right. Well, that's been a good one. Uh hope y'all enjoyed yeah it's supposed to be short wasn't it yeah i thought it would be but you had a trove of treasure trove of knowledge over there so uh y'all be sure to like subscribe comment we got uh several other topics lined up for this month it's gonna be a good one so we'll see y'all soon take care guys